Experiment and state properties of air and steady flow equations. A force draught cooling tower is a mechanical unit to support large heat rejection requirements, such as from an air conditioning system of a building. The study of the cooling tower is an essential part to understand the heat rejection processes. The objectives for these experiments are to determine the end state properties of air and water from tables or chart and to determine the energy and mass balances using the steady flow equation on the selected system. Generally, for cooling tower operation, there will be water circuit and air circuit. For the water circuit, the water temperature in the load tank will be increased before the water is pumped through a control valve and flow meter to the column cap. The water is uniformly distributed over the top packing deck creating a large thin film of water which is exposed to the airstream. The water gets cooled down while passing downward through the packing due to the evaporation process. The cool water is collected in the basin below the lowest deck and returned to the load tank where it is reheated and recirculated. Evaporation causes the water level in the load tank to fall. The amount of water loss by evaporation will be automatically compensated by equal amount from the makeup water tank. For the air circuit, a one side inlet centrifugal fan draws the air from the atmosphere into the distribution chamber. The air flow rate is varied by means of an intake damper. While the air stream passes through the packing, its moisture content increases and the temperature drops. The air passes through a droplet arrestor and an orifice and finally leaves the top of the column into the atmosphere. The apparatus used in this experiment is benchtop cooling tower unit HC3141. This is the schematic diagram for cooling tower bench unit model HC3141 for your perusal. The main power switch, water tank T101, the air chamber tank T102, the cooling column C101, centrifugal blower B101, drainage valve MV103 to air chamber tank T102. The inlet water valve MV101 to cooling column C101. Flow meter FM101. Differential pressure transducer DPT101 across cooling column C101. DPT102, the orifice differential pressure. TT107, the water inlet temperature to the cooling column C101. Water distributor. Temperature indicator TT108 for makeup water tank T103. TT101 and TT102, the wet bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature across cooling column C101. P101 pump. At the control panel, we have power switch. Water pump switch designated by P101. The centrifugal blower switch denoted by B101. The heater switch and the emergency push stop button. 
For the general startup procedures, we are going to perform a quick inspection to make sure that the equipment is in proper working environment. Next, we are going to ensure that all valves are initially closed and the switches such as main switch, pump, blower and heater switch are turned off. Now, we are going to switch on the main power supply. Note that the digital indicators should lead up. After that, we are going to fill the water supply tank T101 with distilled water until the maximum level which is approximately 90 mm from the top. Next, we are going to fill at least half of the makeup water tank T103 with distilled water. Please ensure that the temperature probe TT108 touch the water. Note that it is strongly recommended that only distilled or deionized water used in this unit. The impurities existing in the tap water may cause the depositing in the cover tower. Also, please ensure that the pressure tubing for differential pressure measurement are connected correctly and always make sure that there is no water in the pressure tubing for accurate differential pressure measurement. The equipment now is ready for use. For the experimental procedure, first we are going to prepare and start the cooling tower according to the general startup procedure. Next, we are going to switch on the pump P101 by using the pump switch on the control panel. After that, we are going to adjust the water flow rate using the needle valve MV101, the flow rate indicated on the flow meter FM101 should be 2 liter per minute. Next, we are going to switch on the blower B101 using the blower switch on the control panel. After that, we are going to switch on the heaters using the heater switch on the control panel and set the power output using temperature indicator TT106 on the control panel. The following conditions are allowed stabilizing for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we are going to fill up the makeup water tank with distilled water. We are going to record the initial water level and then start the stopwatch when the temperature indicator TT106 reach 40 degrees Celsius. Now, we are going to start the stopwatch for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we are going to determine the makeup water supply water level. After the system stabilizes, we are going to record a few sets of measurements 
such as the air inlet, dry bulb and wet bulb temperature TT101 to TT104, water inlet temperature TT107, water outlet temperature TT105, orifice differential pressure DPT101 and the amount of water used during the experiment. Then, we are going to obtain the mean value for calculation and analysis. We are going to determine the quantity of makeup water that has been supplied during the time interval by noting the height reduction in the makeup tank. Next, we are going to switch off the blower and let the water circulate across the column to heat up the water in T101 until approximately 43 to 45 degrees Celsius. Then, we are going to switch on the blower B101 and let the unit run. Similarly, repeat the experiment at different set of load. If you notice from your lab sheet, there are three different loads, 0.5 kilowatt, 1 kilowatt, and 1.5 kilowatt. For each load, there will be different percentage, 33.3% for 0.5 kilowatt, 66.7% for 1 kilowatt, and 100% for 1.5 kilowatt. In our previous experiment, we have done the 100% load. Next, we are going to change the percentage to And for the last load, we are going to change to 33.3%. For the general shutdown procedures, First, we are going to switch off the heaters and let the water to circulate through the cooling tower system for 3 to 5 minutes until the water cool down to room temperature. After that, we are going to switch off the blower, pump and power supply. We are going to retain the water in the water supply tank T101 for the following experiment. If the unit will not be used for quite some time, then we are going to completely drain off the water from the unit.